One key to curbing the spread of COVID may be to test for a common symptom, the loss of your sense of smell. It could be a useful indicator on college campuses, at offices, and in restaurants. And to learn more about how this might work, I want to bring in epidemiologist Daniel Larimore, who's with the University of Colorado Boulder and is the lead author of a study on sniff-based tests. Daniel, it's great to speak with you. First of all, what do we know about the linkage between anosmia, which is the loss of the sense of smell, and COVID? Because while it is a common symptom, it's not universal. It's also not clear if it's an early symptom, a coincident symptom, or something that lingers after you've recovered. That's right. Well, thanks for having me. Um, you know, anosmia is an interesting system uh, symptom for diagnosing COVID because it turns out to be a very specific symptom to COVID. Here, when we're thinking of anosmia, we're thinking of the loss of the sense of smell but without a stuffy nose. And that really makes um, anosmia with COVID different from anosmia um, with a stuffy nose with, you know, let's say a common cold. Um, it occurs in around 45% of people when you ask them via a self-reported survey. But something that we found interesting was that when you actually give somebody an objective test where you ask them to identify certain smells, the prevalence of this symptom with COVID goes up to around 80%. Interesting. Now, we do kind of do uh, very crude tests in terms of temperature checks at restaurants and in office buildings. How does a smell test compare with temperature checks, which are used everywhere, but we know are not necessarily the most effective way of finding out if someone could be positive? Well, the reason that we do these temperature checks is that they're basically zero cost to do, right? You just need one of those um, uh, infrared uh, thermometers pointed at your forehead and it costs you, you know, zero cents every single time you use it. Um, with the smell tests, we think that we could um, actually improve upon temperature checks because um, a fever occurs in around 20% of people with COVID and it only lasts for about a day and a half. Whereas loss of sense of smell when we use an objective test occurs in around 80% of people, so four times as many, um, and it lasts for around seven days. So the idea here is that given that we still don't have enough tests, to um, catch cases of COVID before people go on to infect others, maybe we could use these cheap screening tools like looking for a loss of smell as a better way to give people information that they may have COVID before they even know it. You said that they're cheap screening tools. There are already some smell tests available. How do they work right now? How much do they cost? So typically these tests cost around 50 cents a piece and they're really cheap because they're based on old technology, scratch and sniff. The form factor for a lot of these tests is something like a three by five index card. And on the index card, you'll find printed a number of smells, except you don't know what those smells are. So what you'll do is download an app, point it at a 2D barcode on that test card, and it'll pull up a multiple choice test. You scratch a panel and see whether or not you can identify, you know, is this grape, is this fireworks, is this um, a banana scent? You say what you think the answer is, and at the end, the, the app will tell you what your grade was. It'll identify whether or not you should go get a follow-up COVID test because you may have lost your sense of smell without actually noticing it. Now, your school, University of Colorado, will actually be using a limited version of these scratch and sniff tests uh, when the spring semester begins, I believe, middle of next month. How do you plan to use these smell tests with other measures to try to limit the spread of infection? Well, like many college campuses, CU Boulder is implementing a weekly PCR uh, test to look for the actual virus itself. But next to that, we hope that we can learn something about whether or not these smell tests would be good if used at scale for screening. And so we'll hope to enroll um, some small number of students to participate in a daily smell test where they use this card every single day. And if they lose their sense of smell, then they immediately get referred to one of these on-campus PCR tests for a follow-up. We're hoping that we can identify one of the key unknowns with anosmia and COVID, which is when does it typically start relative to when you become detectable by one of our top of the line PCR tests. Once we know that information, we can really refine the models and make a recommendation as to whether or not these should be used at a much wider scale. And final question to you, Daniel. A smell test, is, of course, is just one of the many COVID topics that you've been doing research on, that you've been engaged in. What do you think is the question or questions or problem that you and the rest of the scientific community will be focused on in six months from now, in one year from now, hopefully when there is a vaccine that's more readily available, or I should say the, the community is more readily vaccinated. One thing that I'm really curious about is what is going to be the impact of measures like mask wearing and social distancing um, on other diseases. 
So we've seen, for instance, that the influenza season really has been um, almost non-existent in a lot of places around the globe, where we expected it to be um, much, much higher. So, you know, influenza is one example where we've seen a decrease in prevalence because of these mask wearing um, and social distancing measures. But I'm curious about other diseases like tuberculosis and malaria, where we know from examples in the past that when we take our eye off the ball, mm. um, those diseases tend to get really bad. They really need constant attention to keep them at bay. Yeah. So I'm curious to see, you know, as we move toward the fall and get back to normal and stop focusing so much on COVID, what's happened to these other diseases like flu, uh, tuberculosis, and malaria? Yeah, one thing at a time, Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us. Daniel Laramore, yeah. epidemiologist at the University of Colorado Boulder uh, for his work on smell tests. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.